hung out with Elvis Presley oh, yeah. almost you. every weekend. Elvis was in Germany. And they were very, very good friends. He's a great guy. He's a good friend of mine. I've known him for many, many years. I'm going to get him up here to say hi to you. This guy's part of Living Legend Legacy of Elvis Presley. His name is Mr. Johnny Lang. Give him a round of applause. Got drafted. Uh, 1958, Elvis got drafted. Uh, I got drafted. Uh, March 3rd, March 24th. The first time I saw Elvis was in um, Fort Hood, Texas. I saw him on a planet Earth. Everybody was in awe. Like, oh my God, there's Elvis. So we did our dirty and went back to the basin. The second time I saw him was on a train going from Texas to New Jersey. The little guy was uh, Charlie Hodge, huh? always handing him the scarves. So Charlie says to me, he says, Johnny, uh, let's go see him because he's in the train. I don't know what about that guy. I mean, people always bother me. He's coming on. I says, okay. So we go through three trains, and there's Elvis sitting. My heart is going boom, boom, boom. Here's Elvis Presley. Became famous in 56. I met him in 58. So he had uh, at least five number one hits and he's multi-million by that. So he's sitting there and I'm looking at him. And I'm staring at him and he goes, sit down, chief. So I sit down, you know, the other one, my heart's going low. Well. And he says, who are you? I said, I'm Johnny Lang from Michigan, blah, blah, blah. He said, well, nice to know you, Johnny. So I stayed about five minutes. He said, well, I'll see you on the boat. So we're on the USS Randolph for 10 days. And that's when I really got to know him. On the boat. What a guy. A lot of heart. Wonderful. Just love the guy. Anyway, one day we're up on the deck. And he's got his hand around him like this. And Charlie's right there. So he says, uh, Here, Johnny, I got something for you. And he's, you know, and he goes, Here, here. And I don't want to take it. I'm going like, like this. He says, Here, take it. So it's a watch. He gave me a watch. And at the Christmas time, he gave me a light. Bronson light. So I make a long story short, I spent all my weekends, every weekend at his house. Knew Priscilla, I danced with Priscilla when she was 14. Uh, he threw us a New Year's Eve party in 1959. So I'm dancing with Priscilla, and right past, I knew we had Charlie and Lamar, all the guys. So I'm dancing with Priscilla, and we're not slow, uh, not slow, but fast, but Red comes up and taps me on the shoulder. He says, Johnny. You're going to have to quit dancing with Priscilla. I said, what's the problem? He says, Elvis oh, doesn't like it because you're dancing with her. I says, oh, the big dog got the little bug there. Is he? The guy got all his shirt up, looked at me. He's playing pool. That took care of dancing with Priscilla. <laughs> oh, uh, anyway, another story. So many stories, but my favorite one of all time was father. My favorite one of all time was in the barracks and uh, over in Germany. Place called Gravenberg. Uh, and we're training for combat training. Uh, yeah, I'm a nervous Bobby, all right. So, anyway, I, I find out where Elvis is at, and he's all by himself in the barracks. So, I walk in and he goes, What's the matter, big? He said, I don't feel good, Johnny. He said, I've uh, got the flu or something. All the guys are training. He said, uh, I don't want to be too long here. I said, No problem. So, I sat in the edge of the bed, had a little conversation. I said, Elvis, of all the people you know, all the money and fame you have, I said, why are you and I friends? He says, Johnny, you'd like me if I was a janitor. Thank God I'm not. And that's what I've done for the last 30 years. <laughs> so <laughs> so another, another time, I get to the house. Elvis would come down at about 7 o'clock. This one time, I got there and he came down about 4 o'clock and I was there. So I walk in, Red Zero, Lamar, and Charlie, all the guys, and I said, where's Elvis? He's in the living room, practicing karate. I said, really? So I go in, and Elvis says, here comes Johnny. He says, I'll tell you what, turn out the whole room. He says, I want to practice a little karate with Johnny. I said, wait a minute here, I'm five foot six, 145 pounds. Said, I'm not gonna hurt you. So everybody clears the room, and he goes through his karate stance. And he goes, boom, and he clips my ear, and I didn't hurt me. But he made it bleed. 
So I said, now I'm going to nail him. So I go, oh my God, you hurt me. So he came up here and he gave me a great big hug. He said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, man. What can I do to make it up? I said, you got to realize we're going to clear it. I said, I'll take that. He said, I'm not that sorry. <laughs> the other time we're upstairs wrestling in a bedroom. And uh, like I'm in a full Nelson. And I, my side is a pretty strong guy. So I got my full Nelson and he can't break it. So we're bouncing up and down on the bed. And we break the bread. And his, grand, his grandmother comes up, dodge her. And she jumps all over us. And Elvis says, wait a minute, wait a minute, Grandma. I didn't break the bed. Johnny does. Oh, boy, did she let me have it. <laughs> anyway, I'm not to, I'm going to go. Make a long story short, I'll tell you what. Now I'm getting relaxed. There's, to get the Hall of Fame, just one Hall of Fame, you got to be outstanding. All right? Elvis did three Hall of Fames. Gospel, rock and roll, and country. And three outstanding. So people always ask me, what was he like, Johnny? A lot of heart. I used to make him laugh. One time, there's always two or three people, two or three hundred people watching us play football. We play football every Sunday afternoon, all over the black shirt. So one time we're in a vestibule, and, he, and he's looking at himself because people stare at holes through him, you know. So he's standing there, he's combing his hair, and he looked at me, he says, Johnny, he says, you think I'll ever be bald? I says, no, but I will. Thank you. <laughs> he says, let's go play ball. Anyway, uh, I'm going to let you go. Pete, I want to thank you for allowing me to come up here. And uh, I'll probably be for the next show till the free tables. But uh, I just love the guy. And uh, he loved us, as you're well aware of. He loved his fans. You know, and fans made him. He knew that. But just a wonderful human being. A lot of heart. And, Thank you, Pete, for allowing me to tell a few stories. Yeah. 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 Give a big round of applause. Johnny Lane! Yeah. Good job, Johnny. You know, I got to tell you that Sonny West and the West Brothers were friends of mine, very close. Uh, Sonny was the best man at my wow, wedding. And uh, all those guys are gone. And so all the guys that were around Elvis, I knew a lot of them. I knew a lot of them. Johnny's one of the very few remaining, so it's a pleasure that he got on a plane and flew all the way out here from